What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Whole Views, and you are now watching the whole week, the weekly recap show that I do, talking about the week that was in TV shows, movies, and entertainment. This is episode six, and let's go ahead and start running things down. So, coming out of last week, there was a lot of things that dropped, and we have a very surprising, very satisfying winner of the week this week. But starting off with the first topic is the Marvel Slate dropped and they showed phase four for the new set of MCU movies. Question for this segment would be of all the things that they announced and the dates that they were put on on different movies, which one was the one that got you up the most? For me, it would have to be the Black Panther Wakanda Forever title and film announcement when they announced that it did everything for me as a fan because i like the uh, strategy of approaching the respect toward chadwick boseman's legacy and i like the fact that the the title includes the phrase wakanda forever uh reminding fans that it's not just chadwick boseman's black panther that we fell in love with but in actuality it was the entire nation and world that wakanda has built um, I'm actually going to roll in a clip here of one of my favorite guys that I like to watch, Robert Mar Burnett. Rob was on the John Campion show last week, and Rob just speaks so respectfully and gives a perspective that's so good. Uh, he just speaks so endearing of it, and he gives just the best perspective. I had the exact same thought as he had, but I feel like he articulated it better. So here's Rob. Check out Rob, and then we'll continue. Well, you know, it's to me, the Black Panther character is established in the MCU. I've I've really liked, but when we met uh, Black Panther, we were dealing with tragedy, the death of the assassination of T'Chaka, and family and uh, legacy and continuation and uh, all of those things have been built into this iteration of Black Panther in the MCU, and uh, you know, unfortunately, because of of Chad Bowman passing away so young, they're gonna continue that. But I, the underlying message of that, I think is 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 a good one. We must go on, you know. I mean, I mean, passing away is is as much a part of life as being born. And the fact that Wakanda forever says, like you said, it says that Wakanda will endure. We, the audience, will endure. And I think that's what Chad Bozeman would have wanted. You know, he he his you have to look back at that actor just as a man, as a person, you know, as a human being and as a black man, the strength he showed in the latter part of his career fighting this horrible cancer. And yet you never knew he he soldiered on and delivered an Academy Award nominated performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I mean, this guy, this guy is a force of nature. He was somebody I think any human being can look at and hold up as an example of this is, is the best of us. This is the best kind of human being. This the strength that he had to have, and then the, the the fact that he never his performances were amazing, and yet Wakanda is all about the land of Wakanda enduring, moving forward. It it as it was established at the end of Black Panther, Wakanda, and as we saw in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they are a force on the world stage now. They are revealed to the world, and what Wakanda does, I I would imagine they would be the ultimate superpower. They would probably be the most important country on earth. I couldn't have said that better myself. So glad that I checked that clip out because normally I don't watch everything before I do my own recap. I try to come up with my own perspective, but I had a discussion. I watched the video and I was like, man, he made my point better than me. So wanted to bring Rob back around to include that point. Looking at another topic that came out this week was uh, DC Comics announced that they're looking for uh, a black writer, but I think a black director and a black actor to play the new Superman that they're trying to move forward with. Now, we still don't know if this is going to be in line with everything DCEU style, like he'll be next to Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, or if he'll be, you know, with uh, The Flash, or, or if he's in the Robert Pattinson Batman universe. Who knows? Who knows how all that's going to work? But I just feel like it's incredibly cool that you're going to include 
uh, an African American Superman. I think about my nephews. I think about some of the, the young black boys that I've taught over the years that have never seen themselves in that light before. It would be great to do. One stipulation that I have about uh, an African American version of Superman is that I don't want them to make Clark Kent black. Don't do that, DC. Please go ahead and roll with the Caden Ellis version of the character because making Clark Kent black is doing with people complain about changing a character. Uh, I prefer to give us the Caden Ellis character who is black from the ground up and he is just a version of Superman in the multiverse. I love that. Let's do that. Stick to that. Don't give us Smallville, Ma, Ma, Pen, Ma Kent, Paul Kent, everybody's black. Don't do that. Give me Caden Ellis and give me his whole story. I think that's the best way to move forward with that. But question for this segment, do you agree with that? Do you think they should do Caden Ellis or do you think they should make Clark Kent black? I don't like the black Clark Kent idea, the race swap. Just give us the black version of Superman that you wrote already. Uh, I think that is the reason why DC animated films are always so much better than the on-screen live action versions because the animated versions tend to stick to the comics closer. Things that were written by great, great writers. Why would you change it? Do it again here with live action. Give us the black Caden Ellis Superman, please. Moving into the next spot, we have another announcement of sim very similar fashion. We got Mahershala Ali uh, in Blade. And we noticed that it was missing from the schedule and or it didn't have a date, something like that. And, it, and the idea of it was, well, why was that not announced? Well, Blade has been delayed slightly because of one rewrites, more importantly, looking for a black director. So question here, Blade is a black character for you. If you're if you're watching and you, you want to put in on this. Do you think Blade should have a black director? Because it's a black character, yes. Black-centric story, mm, not so much. He's a vampire hunter. Um, I've never seen a version of Blade that was surrounded by like a, a black cast. You know what I mean? It, it was always, you had the Wesley Snipes version, and then you had a bunch of others. And you did have African Americans that played roles in the stories, but it never seemed like this needs to be a black director. Now, hey, I'm saying that, but I'm also not against it. I, I think that it's a win that you have a black lead, possibly other black co-leads, and black director, writer. Great stuff. Do that. But do you think it has to? I don't think it has to. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm unaware of who directed all the originals. I do know that, uh, what's my guy's name? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to look him up. But I love him. He did the second one, uh, and he also did the Hellboy movies. All right, we got the we got the iPad. Let's let's check it out. Blade Two. Tell me who directed that. And I know his name is it's a G. It's a G. Where is ah uh, yes, Guillermo del Toro. That's what I knew. I knew it was Guillermo. Um, I knew he directed the second one. And I don't think he had anything at all to do with the third. I very much uh, don't remember who did the third. But I knew Guillermo did the second one. He also did, I want to say, like Hellboy 2. Or maybe it was the Hellboy 1. I don't know. But I enjoyed the you know all his, his versions of the comic book stuff that we got. And I don't think it'll have much bearing on the story, being that it's Blade. But it's cool to see Marvel honoring an actor's request to get black actors, you know, a black director and writers. Cool stuff. Uh, great times that we live in. So next on my list today to talk about would be Jupiter's Legacy. And I guess we're going to go ahead and roll this thing into its own video starting right about here. My thoughts on Jupiter's Legacy. So... I did the reaction to it 
the trailer. And in the trailer, I said, you know, I, I feel like, you know, looking back, it's kind of disrespectful. I said, this looks like CW levels of production. So, got to correct that and address that straight off the bat. It is not CW levels of production. It is a step up from CW levels of production. But I also feel it's not the same level of production as you get from Stranger Things or Ozark or... What's another real good Netflix based show? Glow. It's like those shows that I just named, like they don't all have the visuals and the, and the action and the fighting that you get from Jupiter's Legacy. But at the same time, it also feels like, man, those shows feel like a cut above what we get with Jupiter's Legacy. So there's a disconnect. It's, it's a huge disconnect to me um, between, I'm sure, the money that was put into it and then what we get as a show. I must say, though, Josh Duhamel, although he's he's not the best actor in the world, like he doesn't transform on the screen or nothing like that, he's doing a hell of a job. I could tell in episode one, like, he is really giving it all he got. Um, you know, and again... Um, who am I to be judging people but when I look at his performance you know how they say some people phone it in like uh, I think about Bruce Willis people say he's phoning it in and like over time you could really tell like mm, he don't look like he's trying hard Josh DeMille was trying hard um, and it appeared like that in almost every scene um, I liked it I, Jupiter's Legacy is not the best by any stretch of the imagination but if you don't have anything else to be watching, you don't have anything else to put on, I think it's worth a look. I'm, I'm actually on like episode four. I was falling asleep between four and five. I you know, jumped myself back up and finished off four, started five. And you have to get past episode one. And I'm, I'm starting to see a pattern of that with, with content that we've been having lately. But the initial melodrama, real kitty level stuff, uh, that started out Jupiter's Legacy was a stumbling block for me. Like, it, it stumbled out of the gate with episode one. The whole idea of the kids being, oh, you know, my dad didn't come to my soccer games and he didn't hug us growing up. It's like, that's the angle that you're going to use to pursue. I actually was deceived by the trailers. I thought it would be much, much more... Um, problems coming from the kids and not just the world that they're placed in i think that the world that they were placed in made it intriguing um the fact that they're in a country that's very similar to today's usa um and they do all seem like they follow this superman based code i'm actually at a point though where i feel like the past stuff how did they get their powers how did this group of powered individuals come together I feel like that is kind of carrying the show. The 1920s, 1930s stuff is carrying it more than um, the modern day stuff. The modern day stuff is okay, but I think the past stuff is kind of what's doing it for me. I'm way more intrigued about how did they get the powers, how did they build the team, who fell off along the way, than I am about Chloe or Brandon or the, the power of people. It seems like everybody has powers that's around them. Like all that stuff is to me, the past is running the show. So again, not the best show. I'll finish it up and come back and do a proper video. This is just kind of like my first impressions. Um, but I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Some people are a little bit harsher than me on it, but I don't think it was trash. I think it was or it is it's decent and you know i lean superhero so uh, it is what it is there so those are my thoughts um f please feel free to let me know your thoughts about jupiter's legacy you know in the comments if you decide to comment uh keeping it moving right into the winner of the week so for me this is a winner of the week that i hope that we get to see get crowned many many more times with me doing a youtube channel and page and things like that um it's not a, a single winner but 
it's a it's a group winner. Black people, black nerds specifically, we are winning this week. Uh, I often tell young people who are into the superhero stuff and into the anime and into things that are not necessarily mainstream for young people to be into, I tell them, man, you're living at the best time in history to be who you are and into what you're into, specifically for like anime people and uh, superhero genre fans. And it's like the content that we're getting as black nerdy people, the content that we're getting is appearing to be more and more focused on catering to us as an audience group. Um, you have Wakanda Forever being announced that not only did the main star die and Marvel just has a way of like shifting their plans to circumvent that issue. They did that as well as they chose to not just go around it, but keep it Wakanda as a place and keep it central to the story and keep it honoring the main character's legacy. Like, that's huge. The fact that DC, a huge, huge movie making company with a host of characters, still choosing to take one of the most iconic superheroes that has ever been put on screen in multiple iterations and say, you know what, we've done it a lot of times, but let's do a black version now. And they seem dedicated to it, honestly dedicated to it. You have Mahershala Ali, uh, from what it appears in, in different articles, pushing for black directors in Marvel saying, you know what, let's do that. Let's give you what you want. Let's continue to foster the great relationship that we have with the African-American community coming off of Wakanda Forever's announcement, coming off of the success of Black Panther. It's like they're doing things that cater to us, and it feels great. Um, not saying that it has to happen. Not saying that I wouldn't take it any other way. I would be glad with just any other Superman. I would. I want more Henry Cavill Superman. But you're giving me a black one, and I'm not going to complain. Please, give it. Um... I would take Blade, Mahershala Ali's Blade, with anyone at the helm. But the fact that you're giving me uh, and giving black actors and directors and writers more opportunities to make huge budget prof like projects, like that's yes, let's do this. Um, I just love it, man. And I, I think it's a great time for us to be alive. If you're a fan of seeing positive images positive powerful images of african americans on the screen this was your week you won this week congratulations to you thank you for watching the whole week if you did subscribe to the channel come back around check out more videos enjoy yourself and guard your heart